So now we are going to talk about the warm up. Warm up is important part of training and important part of preparation for competition. Unfortunately, it is underestimated very often. But correct warm up can make your performance better. So why do we need warm up? Many functional systems of your body are involved in your shooting technique. It's muscles which create your shooting posture, eyes for control aiming accuracy, tactile, sex, uh, tactile sensors of triggering finger for trigger control and gripping palm, and of course the central nervous system, your brain, consciousness for coordination of your actions, attention, and concentration. The best results can be achieved when all of them are in optimal functional condition. When all the components are ready, you can perform your best. Some component is not ready, the achievement of the goal is in doubt. So, the goal of warm-up is obvious. When the warm-up is finished, shooter should be ready to carry out the task of the training day. Any task which is in his training plan. How shooter can decide that he or she is ready? The way of testing is well known. Simulation of shooting, dry fire. Quality dry shots are a sign that the warm up can be finished and shooter is ready for the first shot. By then, all the functional systems, all parts of your shooting technique should be prepared. So, how the warm up should be ended is decided. What about the beginning? How should we plan the warm-up? In general, the athlete should repeat stages of improvement during warm-up exercises like it was during his learning of shooting technique. It's like short description of development of your shooting technique from simple to complex. The only part which does not need a warm up is your eyes. They are good without any exercise and with training just become tired. It is so even if you don't feel that. So it is ready. Now we recall our improvement in pistol shooting. Gaining control of shooting position and acquiring good stability of aiming pistol is time consuming and laborious process. That you should know from your shooting experience. So, we have to take care of it first. We have to work on the muscles that are involved in maintaining the shooting posture. What do we need from the muscles of shooting position? First, provide good stability of the pistol when aiming. And second, to be controllable and consistent from shot to shot. So, you come to the range, you open pistol case, you take sight at the target. Pistol is stable in aiming area. So, does it mean that your body, your muscles are ready for shooting? Sorry, no. Stability 
It is good, but it is not enough. It is not all what you need. We need our shooting position to be controllable and consistent within a couple of hours. Referring again to the shooting experience, recall what we are trying to work out with shooting practice. Shooter shouldn't try to complete the triggering within short period of good stability. We have to create so long period of stability to complete triggering in, in chosen style without hurry. When we take sight and see stable aiming, we have to be sure that it will last until we complete the triggering relaxed way. It should last as long as we need it. This is the best solution to prevent most of shooting errors. Confidence that your position, stability of pistol, holding are reliable. For that, we need to feel that the muscles which are holding the pistol are controllable. So for that, we need some physical strain on the muscles before start shooting. But what is the problem? If we start dry fire without feeling of muscle control, and this feeling will come later. No problem. If you are not motivated for achievement or technical improvement. If you are intended to achieve something, your mind can do many sorts of tricks, sometimes most unexpected. If dry fire goes without proper quality, it may cause subconscious reaction. If shooter does not feel that the pistol will be stable as long as needed, he can subconsciously react to it with acceleration of triggering, neglecting follow through, etc., etc., etc. It can cause many shooting errors and it can spoil some part of your practice or even or all training day. It's like we grow up some mistake and after that we have to put some efforts to correct it. It is not rational way. So, we need sensation of muscles which make us confident that the position is controllable. There is another issue which shows that the muscle strain before the shooting is necessary. We have to consider tissue which connect muscles and bones of your body, ligaments and tendons. It is not active as a muscle and not as firm as a bone. It is flexible and it is stretchable. Please, attention, it is stretchable. Shooters who shoot with drop-down wrist, they know that if drop is really big, in the beginning of training, shooter has to push the wrist down to bring front side to the level. But after 20, 20 or 30 shots, there is no need for strong push. The range of the movement is increased and front side can be moved lower. The ligaments of the wrist are stretched now. For the wrist, it's not a problem because its position is indicated and controlled with a side alignment. It is obvious and easy to control. The ligaments of the other joints of the shooting position are another matter. 
Their position is not clearly indicated and control is based on muscle sensations. But muscle sensations cannot tell you if the ligaments are stretched. When the ligaments are stretched, the position of the joint changes, but you may not feel it. What is practical result of that? If you start shooting without warm-up, after one or two series, you can find that your position is not aligned properly. Or midpoint of your shooting may move on the target without any obvious reasons until the shooting position has settled. So it is in our interest to settle it before we start practice. So, for the beginning of the warm-up, the general physical exercises should be followed by special physical exercises. It is the best to take long aiming without complete simulation of the shot. Shooter can take sight and hold, hold it until tired. After short rest, again and again and again. As it was mentioned, the athlete should repeat stages of his improvement during warm-up exercises, from simple to complex. The next important skills are flexing the, fixing the wrist and flexing the triggering finger with a separate movement. It is most important in pistol shooting, so we should take care of it. Example of exercise, while aiming, shooter moves triggering finger and watches alignment of pistol sight. The movement should be longer than actual trigger movement and a bit faster. If position of front sight is stable and movements do not affect it, correct fixing of the wrist is found and triggering fig finger moves separately. After several exercises, shooter should memorize it and can proceed to dry shooting. Dry shooting is very valuable kind of training. There is no psychological pressure caused by shots and its result. There is no mechanical disturbance caused by release of the propelling charge. However, it is good training if it is carried out with the same concentration and responsibility as real shooting. Should be no difference between dry fire and shooting technique. Like should be no difference between shooting technique in training and shooting technique in competition. These are steps on one staircase. Dry fire technique, shooting technique in training, shooting technique in competition. So after the special physical exercises, which are aimed to prepare the shooting position, 20 dry shots completed with the maximum concentration, like uh, competition shots, should be enough to prepare athletes for uh, shooting. If it is pre-training for up, shooter will follow the objective of this training day. If it is pre-competition warm-up, shooter should be ready to follow the competition task. Competition task 
should be worked out during recent pre-competition training sessions. And it is too late to work out the competition task during warm-up. Shooters should understand that uh, comparing to the real shooting, dry shooting is a bit simplified way of training and some of his mental resources are released. So he should count on that when put tasks for the uh, dry fire exercises. For example, if you know that uh, during shooting series, it happens that you forget to follow through a couple of times and uh, it happens regularly, you can request yourself to do it thoroughly 10 times out of 10 during dry shooting. Of course, without damage for the quality of uh, another part of technique. It is little easier in dry fire than with ammunition. Also, uh, some other subjects can be brought up during warm up. Uh, for example, uh, it is not easy to concentrate on front sight every shot. Attention goes uh, from there very easily. Sometimes even with the fo uh, eye focused on the front sight. You see it, but you don't control it properly. And this is not a vital mistake. If your uh, attention run away from front sight, you can shoot 10 and you can shoot another 10, but this is a mistake. And finally, you will be punished for that. So you can put as a task to focus the aiming eye on the front sight and keep attention on its alignment until the release of trigger. It's easier to do in dry fire and you will get experience. Successful ac uh, accomplishments should be counted. Another exercise, keeping all the requirements for correct triggering, coordinate triggering with aiming so that shot comes without acceleration without your conscious command, but shortly after arrival to the sighting area. The main requirements for correct triggering should be kept and number of good shots should be counted. One more exercise. When pulling the trigger, more attention should be paid to the muscles which are bending the triggering finger. Then to tactile sensors of the skin on the trigger. The main requirements for correct triggering should be kept as well. This is good exercise for shooters who complains on freezing movement of triggering finger. And do not forget to count good shots. It is important. Of course, the task should be chosen according to the current objectives. But some accomplishments or achievements during the warm up will affect positively your practice with ammunition. And don't be afraid to put complex tasks for your dry firing. This is training good. This training is good to introduce new elements, to try new technique. Some of you can say that we go too far and it looks more like training, not like warm-up, but we should prepare 
all the system involved in your technique, including mental systems. Your brain need warm up as well. So dry training is good for that.